Lake Placid, more like Lake Soft Wiener, we watch Lake Placid and we are in defense of bad movies. <laughs> Hey guys, Sam here with another In Defense of Bad Movies. In Defense of Bad Movies, the show where we watch a movie that is generally regarded as bad and just show you how amazing that movie actually is. <sighs> Case in point, oh, Lake God. Placid. I am as joined I'm joined That's as always. <laughs> I'm joined as always by Lauren. Hello. And Bobby. Hey. What's up, guys? Hi. You know, sometimes Dead is better. To watch a movie. <laughs> You know, I've, I've had to buy movies. Like I've mentioned before, I own Batman and Robin and The Postman yeah. now. Sometimes you have to rent movies. Sometimes you borrow movies. Sometimes you have to subscribe to a fucking service <laughs> called Shudder in order to watch a movie because that's the only way to watch a movie. Oh, you couldn't buy? It wasn't available to buy? Mm-mm. Oh, we got lucky then. Yeah, <laughs> we did the same thing. <laughs> but you, you canceled your subscription though, right? No, Shudder. This podcast episode is brought to you by Shudder, the one-stop <laughs> shop for shitty uh, horror movies. Shitty horror movies on demand. Do you like horror Five movies? Five bucks a month is kind of a steal, though, for uh, yeah. streaming services. That you know? is true. If this is what you're into, well, yeah. means. Like, do you like horror movies? And we don't mean just good horror movies. Like, any horror movie, like, have we got the streaming service. just <laughs> roll the dice and yeah. you can watch all cheerleaders die. <laughs> It's pretty much the horror selection at Redbox. Heather's is on here. Oh, interesting. <laughs> I just shuddered thinking about Heather's. Ah, uh, Shudders. What See, we should be doing it. The Blair commercial. Witch Pro- Blair Witch Book of Shadows is on here. But oh, not Blair Witch One. Ronnie no, would be. Blair Witch Project is on okay, here too. All right. uh, Maybe so, this isn't so bad, guys. So we've got a friend who works for a com- competing one uh, streaming service, and I wish I could name the uh, what it was because we could uh, give him a plug right now. You don't know it. Uh, it rhymes with sex licks. You don't know. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, you're welcome. For This is a movie that I brought to the table. You son of a bitch. A little background. You monster. A little background. So just like, much like, it came out at about the same time as Mystery Alaska. And I was, at the time, <laughs> big fan of David E. Kelly. I had a huge crush on... Uh, Bill Pullman at the time. No, uh, Bridget, Bridget Fonda at the time. So uh, it was just right up my alley. I will say she got too skinny for the, for my taste for this role. It felt like she was wow. trying to fit into that whole David E. Kelly's overly yeah. skinny thing. But This movie fucking hates Bridget Fonda. This movie and hates... in a movie that hates everyone. This it is a particularly movie that, hates Bridget Fonda. This is a movie that hates everyone and a movie who everyone... Like, everyone in the movie hates each other, too. Mm-hmm. And is the journey of the movie, they come to respect and even like each other. No, not really. So let's 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 go back a uh, few steps. You monster. <laughs> Funny you should mention that. This is a monster movie, uh, ostensibly. Uh, not really. <laughs> Some <laughs> um, I think there should, we should have, like, an in defense of David E. Kelly thing. Nope. Because I even know this was David E. Kelly. This is David E. Kelly. Oh, yeah, that makes yeah. it so much worse. Oh wow! Like if it was just a regular poor asshole, like putting his heart and soul into a movie, it'd be like okay, it's not good. But like this poor asshole. But it's David E. Kelly. I know. I know. Ally McBeal does not hold up well. I wonder how the practice it's was. I rough. think. I'd be I th- curious. I would really like to go back and watch. Because, yeah, it's the same, like, I love Dallin McBeal, and now watching it as a woman in her middle age, like, oh, yeah, this is problematic. Okay, I see what everyone was talking about. Middle age? You know. You think you're going to die at 50? I- <laughs> oh, sweetness. <laughs> I I have a feeling, I have a sneaking suspicion, I loved the practice, but I have a feeling, like, everything David E. Kelly does not, d- uh, did, does not hold up. Mystery Alaska is pretty good. It, like was, it, was, it was fine. 
I, I mean, I, I, I was the one who defended that movie, and it was, it was fine. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to make a joke about me defending it. No, Mystery Alaska is bullshit. It's really bad. <laughs> okay, good. He's still I regarded. Think... I don't think that he's like entirely written off as a writer. I mean, Big Little Liars, I have not watched, but everyone seems to love that show. He's, uh, I, and... I, I might have to yeah. verify, but Big I think... Big Little Lies? Or... Big Little Lies. Pretty that's that's Little really Liars good. and Big Little Lies. Yeah. They're the same that's, show. That's David E. And, yeah... He does right. mystery, mystery Alaska too. He yes, I know. <laughs> Big Little Lies is really good. I haven't watched it, and oh. everyone's losing their damn shit. So it's pretty good. It is David. E- huh? I well, I'm not. You know, he he might have improved, but I, I do have a feeling that like, what he did in the '90s is probably not. I see, but good. like he, there is a lost. charm to him. There, he is able to spin a delightful yarn and make some like fun weirdos for us to really enjoy watching. And so it really begs the question: why none of that was in this film? You know, it's funny. My perception of this film was someone tried to make a monster movie. And it was bad, and then they tried to lean into how bad it was to be like to be one of those shitty like half-assed ironic movies where like no no the joke is how bad it is. But now that I know that he yeah. did this, I'm like no, it's because it's not even genuine. Like if it was that, if it was someone trying real hard, then you'd feel like sad and maybe you'd see the value. <laughs> but this movie is. So pleased with itself it thinks it's being so funny and i think that was david e kelly in the 90s <laughs> and which is why i think it, it wouldn't hold up i wonder why he was inspired to make this movie at all it okay so first things first <laughs> yeah, this movie let's... broke me in that i was watching this and i was compiling notes and i'm like nothing none of i didn't like it obviously <laughs> But I think I didn't like it for very obvious reasons, and none of them are particularly interesting. Okay. And so I'm legit, and this is not me trying to put you on the spot, and this is not me like trying to make it awkward. I am genuinely curious what you like about this movie, because <laughs> I think you're the hero of this episode, Sam. Like, I, I think it's way more interesting why you might like this movie than why we might hate this movie. <laughs> you might be disappointed. <laughs> uh, I should say, before we start, a couple things. Uh, we've got a new microphone that picks up literally everything. And I think I hear the Disneyland um, fireworks going on right now. <laughs> so we, that might be picked up. Uh, Bobby has now forced to hold his wine glass for the remainder of the episode because uh, he just realized that if he put it down, it will sound like an explosion. We can pause if you want to do that. Um, or not. Um, okay, so... <laughs> I had not seen this movie since it was new. And I remember walking away thinking it was... Guys, it's like Batman and Robin. It's a comedy. Oh, gosh. <laughs> You're going to have to try harder than that, Sam. <laughs> um, and I remember thinking it was very funny. And there were a few lines, even upon rewatching it, that did stick out. And we're like, okay, that was funny. <laughs> but they were way fewer and further between than I remember. It starts off... I can't believe I'm going to say this. It starts off strong. No, it doesn't. I there were <laughs> there were little visual gags at the beginning that I laughed. There's um, right the we start with kind of like an underwater. They they the the beginning is kind of like the first scene of Jaws in that like you have your first victims of the monster, and they cut to like underwater shots, and you're waiting for the reveal of the monster, and then I'll do a very dramatic cut to a turtle or a dramatic cut. They did too. Cut to the turtle was so preposterous. And, and again, and the, it's not tongue in cheek. It does. I think it, I actually do. The, I do think it was. <sighs> there were two jump scares there were two in that opening. Just, the scariest part of the movie was a turtle and a beaver and, jumping out of nowhere. <laughs> and I thought that was fun. And I even I think agree. like half of a man jumping into a boat at the very at the end of that first part was a little funny. Okay. And it, okay, maybe if the movie had gone on with like piranha level of silliness. Does it? Okay. I think, sure. I think maybe that's it's kind still of, insane. I think that's kind of what it's going for. He was but going it only for achieved it in one scene. Mm-hmm. I, I think he was going for like the a mix of the piranha level of silliness and the David E. Kelly Rye um, sense of humor oh, stuff that so much. it didn't it didn't work and and I think a big part of why it didn't work was that everyone hate all, none of the characters were like everyone hates each everyone is hateable and hates each other and it's very clear why because they're all terrible and there are too many of them 
There's yeah, so many there's exa- I, I'm going to say there's exactly one too many character. And the, the <laughs> weirdly, Who would we vote off? All I right. think weirdly the superfluous character is the Bill Pullman character, who has no he fucking purpose I to be there. There's so many people who are pointless and shouldn't be here, and yeah, I, there's a good argument that he has absolutely nothing to do, he has no energy or urgency in any of the movie, and I love Bill Pullman, but... <laughs> Also, this is like the most stereotypical sleepy Bill Pullman. I feel like Brendan Gleeson, if he had like every, he hates everyone. How sarcastic everyone is, every, you know. Uh, everyone's a sarcastic. <laughs> In the I, weirdest phraseology. Guys, how is it not all over the internet? People trying to dissect why Brendan Gleeson talks like that. Because if you've not seen the movie. Very early on, he is out on a boat for some reason. The sheriff is out on a boat with a man who is tagging turtles for whatever reason. (laughs) And, like, they're quipping at each other and there's, like, contentiousness going on. And after the guy jumps off the boat in his really suppressed Irish accent, is like, ah, everyone's a comedian, sarcastic. (laughs) (laughs) And it happens a few times like that in the movie. It's like a runner that is never explained. But it doesn't make sense either. You think it's like, oh, he's reading the stage directions. But, that's exactly <laughs> But, like, it, you know, if it was the stage directions, it wouldn't be at the end of the sentence. And so, like, yeah. okay, it can't be that. It can't be that. I assumed I'm going to go to Google, and there's going to be a website after website <laughs> dedicated to people trying to understand you know, why this happens. That's actually going to be our next podcast, is every episode we get a little bit closer to trying to find out why he says sarcastic. Because it happens a few times. It's like the worst idea It's ever. always after descriptive. Yeah. Like, oh, old timer sarcastic. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Whole sentence sarcastic. She, <laughs> she's rude sarcastic. <laughs> I actually. That this it, movie's pretty good. <laughs> oh my god. That's, I, I, I do think that is legitimately hilarious, but I don't know if it's intentionally hilarious. Like, if that was the running gag of, like, describing what kind of sarcastic everyone is, like, I could see that. It might not be funny. Right. But the wording of the first sentence, everyone's a comedian sarcastic, makes no sense and therefore explodes any idea that this is all the way on purpose. The closest thing I could think of is that he is such a redneck that he does not understand how basic <laughs> syntax works. But that's not the case. And anyway, that's what I was going to say is that's what his problem, I think he's... He should be a genuine character throughout, but he gets sarcastic too. He becomes Maynard sarcastic. Mm-hmm. And, and, oh, I have so many directions he, I want to go on on this, but it's set in Maine, and if you're doing a tongue-in-cheek action movie, how are you not having everyone with a ridiculous Maine accent? Yeah. Everyone should be like, oh, yeah, the crocodile now. <laughs> that, like, automatically, so much comedy right there. If you're trying to be funny, you've missed a huge opportunity. <laughs> Filming your stupidly titled movie in it, Canada. It should have taken place in, in Massachusetts. Because everything that Would David be, Kelly was doing was in really Massachusetts. Alright, alright. I want to play Mary, Fuck, Kill with the team. <laughs> okay. And I know there's four, but like, pick the three that you want to play with. You've got Bill Pullman. You've got terrible Bridget Fonda. You've got you sexy You go sheriff. to fucking hell. I mean her character, not okay. her. I will literally kill you. <laughs> Who the fuck is Bridget? I mean, okay, never mind. No. Mary fuck kill. Mary um, fuck kill. And then we'll get back to it. Then you've got the sheriff, and then you've got Croc expert enthusiast worshiper Hector Croc. Oh, that's Oliver Platt. Yeah. Oliver Platt, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, well, I'm not going to acknowledge Bill Pullman's presence in this movie, because I, I don't think Bill Pullman would acknowledge his own presence in this movie. <laughs> um, no, I'm just going to... I don't know. Mary fuck kill. <laughs> You Mary. don't really have to play it, but just think about it. Yeah. Take that home with you. All right. And consider how awful it feels. Yeah. Because everyone is terrible. It is It difficult. requires you to spend any amount of time with these people. Mm-hmm. I like to think that Brendan Gleeson was so awful because he was surrounded by these other awful people. he's like, and I'm a legit a... actor. He was all... I could see it. There's plenty of, like, I don't give a shit in his face about this He movie. was all over that young girl who was asking him... Oh, that part was so that... weird. It was very weird. Brendan Gleeson, is he... Was he... I'm trying to... Was he in a ton of shit in the 90s? This like, was sort of him, like... He, was in, he had not been in a lot in America yet. Right. So this was certainly a, like... I bet it was a someone selling, like, yeah, you're going to break into the scene. Like, do this David E. Kelly. He's a really hot writer. It's going to be a fun, like, 
tongue in cheek. Watching this in the year of our Lord 2018 (laughs) was weird because it has the most 90s cast ever. (laughs) Like it has Bridget Fonda, Bill Pullman, and Oliver Platt. Yes. And Brendan Gleeson? And Brendan You're like, what the fuck is he doing here? Prince of the Nightmares. Who has become the most successful of all of them. Right. But who took, like, another decade for, I feel like, his career to, like, fully blossom into mm-hmm. the mainstream? <laughs> long after all three of them had died, the other three had, had yeah. long since passed. Um, while Lauren is researching why Brendan Gleeson finished every season with Sarcastic, Ugh. like, she wants to dedicate a... I need to know why. We want to have something to that. I want to have something dedicated to just that scene with the young girl who comes out of the, Ugh. I don't know, bait shop, whatever yeah. it was. And then she 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 literally asks, like, oh, I hear there's something dangerous in the lake. They're like, oh, you know, oh, yeah, it's, we're going to take care of it, whatever it is. And then she just walks away. There's <laughs> the no good way. And, and then she he, doesn't just come up. Like, she's asking she's, it, like, I'm sexy. Like, hey, I hear there's a thing in the lake. <laughs> And the chef's like, huh, yeah, well, ma'am, it's it, like, who is this girl that's, like, coming out and, f- it's so weird. It's so, like. And uh, I could see her not saying anything and leaving, but it would be, like, the slowly backing away because Brendan Gleeson is so obviously creeping on her. Yes. That would have been funny. But no, she's like, I'm going to turn my back and swish my butt as I walk away without saying a word. It was a weird scene. I love this movie, guys. I don't know what that is trying to communicate. It, just to say how off-putting Bridget Fonda is, these people are very happy to fawn over any other comely young lass. Why is the Bridget Fonda character there? Oh, she I mean, has no reason to be there. what does the, she bring to the team? The reason is so flimsy and preposterous, and I mean, there, it could love have been in, so many more things that could have been done. Love interest for the person who should not have been in the movie in the first place. Oh. Right. Well, and then also it's like she's... For a little bit, she's the city girl who's stuck in the woods, and then she's because she's the she, since she's the lady, she's the resident empath who has to like <laughs> run around and 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 you know flesh out all the male characters, and then like Thank at the goodness. very end, it's like oh shit, she's the love interest too. <laughs> Is she our hero or not? She, she should have been There's the hero. No hero. It should have been her movie. The it should have been her. The hero. It could have been. I it mean, should have been her journey that you know she just was the this, amount of screen time she got suggested that was the goal. Yeah, she was yeah. this meat character who apparently had a thing about literally everything. She's supposed <laughs> to be like the audience surrogate. Apparently. Because we start with her away from Maine and we follow her to Maine. We don't see that with anybody oh, else. So many questions. But then she's not the straight man. Like, Bill Pullman is kind of the straight man, but yeah. then he just disappears. He's, like, like, not in this movie. And wait, oh gosh, it's the, who called her? Her job is she works in the Natural History Museum in New York. Presume she's a paleontologist, so fossils, and apparently someone called the museum to identify the tooth that was extracted from the bisected I mean, diver. Like, how is that the first call? It doesn't you, appear, there's no, like, we called all these zoos and no one can identify it, and someone finally said, call a museum. That's not even it. It seems like first call no. was paleontologist Alan Arkin, and since he wants to get rid of his ex-girlfriend because he's been banging Mariska Hargitay, yeah. he sends her up to Maine you have, for whatever reason. You have to assume that Mariska Hargitay actually saw an article in the newspaper and is looking for reasons to get rid of the other, the, you know. Then the, let's see it. <laughs> the movie, our first introduction is Alan Arkin. T- Adam Arkin. Adam. I yeah, feel Adam. terrible because I feel awful. Adam Arkin calling her off to have a conversation and then she's freaking out in the next scene because he broke up with her and Mariska comforts her terribly. Because they're all awful people, <laughs> because, every single person. Because, as Lauren said, man, David E. Kelly just really gets women. Oh, he <laughs> so, writes women so, so well. So, yeah. <laughs> it's so crisp and well-defined. And the, oh, he treats Bridget Fonda in this movie with, like, full of doom and hatred. Yeah. Like, she is not redeemable at all. And then they try to jerry-rig the redeeming, and, like, she's having growth. She's not. It, it Weirdly, weird. I think if I had to pick my favorite character of our heroes, <laughs> it would have to be the Brendan Gleeson character simply because, as unlikable as he is, he seems to have the most relatable disdain for the rest of the characters. <laughs> that, you know, Like, it's the most justified. Like, all right. <laughs> Every time he says something shitty, I'm like, yeah, I mean, he, he's not <laughs> wrong. But at the same time, he, just like everyone else, took that stance before meeting anyone. Like, wouldn't you? <laughs> 
But literally everyone, the first time they meet, they are already antagonistic. It is the strangest thing. See, it's weird. Like, Bill Pullman shows up and is... It's weird because he's basically just screaming at wallpaper, the, the <laughs> Brendan Gleeson character. I'm like, why are you upset? This guy is literally saying nothing. He's just standing there. Yeah. But then, like, Bridget Fonda shows up and he doesn't like her. I'm like, I get it. <laughs> Oliver Platt shows up and you're like, totally get it. This guy sucks. Yeah. that make, Yeah, that makes sense. On the other hand, it's Oliver Platt. And, like, he just comes in as disgusting, like, dripping with awful, but he's it has got a twinkle of charm, but I can't help it, I almost, love him so much. Almost feels like there was an, even another character written in the screenplay, <laughs> and then they condensed the two characters into the Olive Platt, Oliver Platt character, because <laughs> he just, like, fluctuates from, like, being the, like, the really sympathetic and resourceful one to just being gross, and I'm like, what the fuck is happening? Because he is the most knowledgeable. He does come in and give all of the exposition, thank goodness. In, in his defense, Natty, Natty Gann does have some great breasts. <laughs> I can't believe it's Natty so. Gann. And she's down with it. She just yeah. throws off all of her responsible lady deputy and just like, thank you. She okay. just loves those tents he wears for shirts and she's super <laughs> into them. Because he comes in with the sexual like dynamo energy. <laughs> and I'll admit the twinkle, but still. He was the Ian Malcolm character. <laughs> like more sexually aggressive, but less appealing. Yes, definitely. <laughs> And he's still great, because he's got a twinkle, and I love him. I blame this movie for Bridget Fonda not acting anymore. Aww. And that kind of hurts my heart. It's not that dumb baby. That kind of... I, I, uh, <laughs> I miss do you, Now, do you think that it's because it was a bad experience, or do you think it's because she had to fall out of every vehicle that she was in at any point? And, like, I, at some point she got head injured. Oh, my God! <laughs> <laughs> every vehicle she rides in, she falls out of the boat twice. Falls out of the truck at the end of the movie. <laughs> I well, was I... losing my goddamn mind when that happened at the end. <laughs> and then, okay, so, like, at the big climax, we're going to capture the crocodile with a terrible plan. And yeah. she, like, falls out of the truck as it's screeching away. And the solution is come swim out to the broke-down helicopter that's 30 feet offshore. Yeah, off come to me. That's the best plan. Don't run on land. That's silly. Go yeah. where the crocodile's comfortable. Yeah. I wanted the real love story to be um, Brendan Gleeson and Oliver Platt that a little amazing. bit. Yeah. Because... Brendan Gleeson fucking hates Oliver Platt's character more than any other character, and then he he adorably starts getting really worried about him when it looks as though Oliver Platt's going to be the member of our team who gets killed to raise the stakes. No, nobody <laughs> yeah. gets killed. It there was... are no stakes. <laughs> um, it was the most compelling relationship to develop. It was. If they had focused on that or tried to make that at all realistic. But, but they just hate each other until Oliver Platt's about to get eaten by the monster. And Brendan Gleeson, who has seen friendly co-workers get their heads eaten off, is just like... And taking it in stride. Yeah, it's just like, no, not not my Oliver Platt. <laughs> I, I, you, you mentioned Oliver Platt almost getting eaten. And I want to come back to something you said earlier, okay. but I don't remember what it was. Fair enough. But, so I'm going to talk about the Oliver Platt thing. You say he had almost gotten eaten when the crocodile was right in front of him. Which is explained later. He wasn't the crocodile wasn't hungry, he'd have just eaten the cat. No, that's not what was happening. The crocodile was judging him. <laughs> Taking the balance of his character. That makes more sense because I was gonna say, does the croc in in real life do crocodiles just like sit in front of their prey waiting to get hungry? <laughs> just like, well I'm not hungry now, but maybe in a few minutes. It's just fair. What are you gonna do? Run away? Like uh, the crocodile, yeah. they come up with this fucking they have a trapper who, like, fucking never actually traps the crocodile. <laughs> they have, um, you know, they, they come up with this fucking boneheaded scheme of, like, skimming a cow over the surface of the water <laughs> until they get to land. But, like, not 15 minutes before, we see Betty White lead a, <laughs> lead a cow down to the, the, you know, the lake's edge, and the crocodile's just sitting there waiting for the cow. I'm like... Don't do it the way it's been doing it for years. That's silly. They didn't know she was doing that. They saw her well, doing that. Three of them did. Oh, yeah, that's right. They knew. That's how they found out that she was in cahoots with the croc. The croc, who is the hero of the movie? The croc is just living in his, like, minding his own damn business. And the people are the villains. I remember what I was going to say. You mentioned um, the, that it was a stupid plan for him to have, like, Bridget Fonda come out to the helicopter. Plan. I maintain. But I, they had said earlier that crocodiles don't see well underwater. But oh, that was that. but that was immediately like disproven by like the first person he does the croc kills is underwater. Real fine. Yeah, he does just fine. He has no trouble like Little Mermaid style finding her, but unfortunately chomping around that random yeah. pylon in the lake <laughs> that she was hiding behind. Like 
Yeah. He's doing a good enough job. Yeah. yeah no. It's got to be a Jurassic he Park was, thing. He was actually just, he wanted the pylon. He didn't actually want oh, the pylon. Oh, that's was? Now I feel stupid. He was just gnawing on mm-hmm. it, just like a teething thing. He just was trying to get heads thrown at her. <laughs> hey guys, Betty White was so hilarious because she cursed and was a salty old lady. I'm not going to pretend that that's not a little bit funny, yeah. but it's also the movie being so pleased with itself. It is, and it I is. think we have the... I know that's been her shtick. That w- you, we have endured since then 20 years of, like, isn't it funny that Betty White's being grass? And I'm like, Betty White's a national treasure. I'm yeah. not shitting on Betty White, but no. that joke is really fucking overplayed. And she could do so much more. And that character is just a bitter old woman. It's not like we're blindsided by, like, this woman's really sweet. And then in, in the yeah. final act, when it's revealed that she's actually bad she starts swearing at everyone it's just from the Which get-go would have been funny right from the get-go she's just like swearing and, yeah. and saying she killed her husband and admitting to murdering her husband which <laughs> they're like well all right well I, we might revisit this in the future we might not guys there's no laws against murdering your husband Apparently right not <laughs> not main that crazy other planet <laughs> Let's investigate everything except for the fucking sociopath lady who lives, who's the only <laughs> resident on this lake. Who has a farm with enough cows to sustain a crocodile that no one, it, you can't have a farm by a lake, number one. Cows are expensive. And <laughs> like, stupid. It's, oh, poor cows. <laughs> but just, like, what is the supply on cows here? Yeah. She In must her be little quite cottage. Wealthy. No one's ever commented, why does she keep ordering cows? Because she doesn't have the room to keep those cows. Hmm. Maybe she doesn't feed the uh, cows as often as it was. As Is it was Betty suggested. White fucking the the crocodile? Well, that's a bit much. She got rid of her husband. It's a bit unseemly. The croc the accidentally croc ate her husband. Accidentally. If you believe what she says, <gasps> she's already lied once about how he died. Well, if that were the movie, I'd be more interested in it. Mm-hmm. If it was like a love story between her and the croc. This is this was ahead of its time. It's the shape. It's the shape of water, but you know. I'd be into that. But then they gave us a bullshit second croc reveal in the last three <laughs> seconds the, of the climax. The quandary. Do we, do we, we, kill, do we kill it or do we let it live? Do we kill it? Do we let We can do both. We can do both. <laughs> All right. We'll let it live. Oh, the crocodile. Shoot it. <laughs> we shot it. You know what I loved? When they had, you know, they had the climax, they decided... We are going to try are to. We're talking about Betty White and the crocodile yes, having the cro- yeah, 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 yeah. That's how we get the second crocodile. There yeah. was just the one at first. Oh my god! What if it looked like Betty White? That would be incredible. amazing. So uh, right after the climax, uh, where they had decided, yes, we are going to try to trap the croc. Mm-hmm. The the fl- Florida people come to do what do they're going to do what they're going to do. Which they had agreed they're just going to kill the croc. Somebody even said, I think it was, who said it was it. Uh, Brendan Gleeson? No, it was Oliver Platt, because he was on board. He says, like, oh, yeah, now they arrive. You fuck. They were going to kill it. You didn't want them to arrive any earlier. He, uh. Yeah, because he was two different characters, and then they yeah, condensed them into true. one. Instead of just getting rid of the Bill Pullman character, which would have made <laughs> way more sense. But then and, who is she going to fall in love with? Yeah, because they... But position-wise, he's the only one that deserves to be there is the problem. And so it's a shame <laughs> they didn't have any kind of character, because really, wildlife and game... Has the best reason to be here, but yeah, that's true. But <laughs> why don't? Why wouldn't you just turn the Brendan Gleeson character into wildlife and glam? Much better. Of course, he's cantankerous because he's got a thankless job up in this like mountain area. Yeah, no. he's he's no. Why no. don't you fucking turn Bridget Fonda into wildlife and game? <laughs> what is this? Oh my or god! Or why isn't she like a zoologist that just like works in a lab and doesn't get out into the world and like that's the story of her having to branch out? Why is she a paleontologist? Oh, you know what? They I, tried to make I, so much about like it's a. They wanted to Jurassic Park it. They did, and it was yeah. so stupid. Like, it, oh, yeah. it's a, you know... It's a, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, Do oh. as ex machina. No, but like, oh, it's, no. a, it's an ancient being. Clearly, it must have some sort of prehistoric... Like, it's just a fucking yeah. big crocodile. Anyone could have identified that. <laughs> um, and also, she has the thing where... He, uh, Bill Pullman's is like, you're having the time of your life. And she's all, no, what? People are dying. Oh my, does it show? And then the immediate next scene, something rough happens. She's all, get me out of here. I hate this. Please. This is horrible. And why is she having the time of their life? Because it's not like 
I'm good at science and worked in the lab, and now I get to apply. My whole things have been happening. That w- that should have been her journey. That could have been journey. the journey. She has literally not one thing to do after she looks at the tooth. Nope, not a single thing. She just comes along for boat ride. She and is bitches a about tourist, and that is not me being misogynistic. That is me pointing at the movie saying, like, are you fucking kidding me? You gave her nothing to do except for to, like, scream and complain about shit. She comes along gets mad that camping means tents because she thought I'm in a hotel. Yeah. Which is preposterous. Yeah. And then also her backstory is she used to, like, summer at the lake with her grandparents all the time. Like, okay, so you are used to the country. That's not even, like, a stretch for you. That even could have been part of the thing. It was, like, she... Yeah. And she wanted she distance herself hate from the that. lake because of bad experiences at it, except she did drop that she was a lonely, sad child who skipped rocks on her own. Unsurprising to everyone. But the the bear attack that turned out oh, to be a crocodile attack, that, that was a good reveal, bear. right? That bear who, like... I didn't see that coming, the bear jumping out of the that, woods and beelining it to the water. Because that it I, makes no sense that bear, like, had such a run-up that he barrels in full speed and we didn't hear him coming. <laughs> he... Barrels yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. That's no, that's because he was being scared by the other crocodile. That's why he was running away from. Is that, that what yeah. it was? That, we can only assume. Mm. I actually did think that was a good reveal. It may not have made the most sense, but it was like, you know, it was fun. All those it, traps, and not one of them gets used. No, <laughs> that's not true. What? On a crocodile. A couple. Yeah, on Brendan Gleeson. I was going to say, <laughs> except to humiliate Brendan Gleeson. And also, we know what the size... Like, we know this is a very large crocodile, at least. These traps they're setting seem so small. For some Bren- reason, like Brendan know. Gleeson's size? Yeah, exactly. Like, it's perfect for Brendan Gleeson. But, like, they know this croc is already beyond yeah. reasonable measurements. No, no, but Bobby, of all the characters in there, the one guy who needed to be brought, be- brought down a peg or two <laughs> is the redneck who... <laughs> Calls everyone out on being a douchebag <laughs> when they are legitimately being a douchebag. Give the older, not all the way healthy Irish actor who's not happy to be here the most physical and uncomfortable stuff to do. How That's old, the one. How old is he in this movie? Oh, I bet it's not technically that old. Maybe like early 40s? He looks the uh, same. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He looks like a slightly younger Brendan Gleeson. He has aged remarkably well because he looked like a salty old yeah. Irishman in the 90s. <laughs> He's 63 now. Do the math. Movie came out in 96? Okay. Yeah, he's great. I love Brendan he's Gleeson. He's wonderful. I think you are a mental. <laughs> 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 Which no one... <sighs> Were there any editors, like, paying attention to anyone on set, like, catching some of this stuff and saying, is that, are you sure that's what we want to say? Are you sure that he should be saying uh, comedian sarcastic? It's probably like money. I almost feel like a bully, because I'm like, it's not like there's huge Lake Placid stands out there. I feel like we, like, brought this Got- mummy of a movie back to life just so we could just, like, point out, like, look how fucking dumb this fucking movie but is. But we are, Guys, this, because- no, oh, you go. this movie has at least two sequels. <laughs> well, okay. Which are probably more in the spirit of what the movie is supposed to be. Yeah, I'm sure. But we are but... here pointing out the hubris of Hollywood because we haven't learned from history. They're still making these kinds of movies with like big stars and what they think is a clever idea, and it's just straight garbage. Actually, I would like to really know how much it made because if it made sequels, it must have been profitable. I mean, I mean, horror movies are always profitable. They're not like yeah. they're street to video sequels. <laughs> In the, in Probably, the like, yeah. street-to-video horror market, that is I'm true. sure. That is true. I think... It, I'm not going to explain why he uses sarcastic and weird points of the sentence, but I think... I have a theory that somebody read a draft, said this movie was too sarcastic, and so David E. Kelly is like, <laughs> okay, the way, to, the way to diffuse that is to have characters point sarcasm, which just was stupid and especially so he just did it that's what i think happened okay new idea so he said anytime when there was anything sarcastic he chose one character and he put the word sarcastic at the end of the line thinking he would go back later and make it more make it make sense but brendan gleason just got that draft and said it (laughs) this is my line sarcastic it's like that clip of uh of ken sorbo and yeah yeah just screaming disappointed (laughs) I hate the... The Jews, we know. This has been well established. I know. Wow. I, someone had to say it. Um, no, I hate the... Uh, I hate the, the the smug 
campy horror movie genre. Just because I, I don't like the, uh, hey guys, it's bad on purpose, that's the joke. I, yeah. yeah. Shit. And I, it's so... I feel like we're still doing it now, <laughs> and I'm like... Are you saying you're not going to come to my Sharknado marathon? <laughs> <laughs> like, it's a movie that society it does not have to try, because it's going to make the money anyway, and so we're just going to be ridiculous. It's like, yeah, but, yeah, you just do stupid shit, and then you point to it, and when people say, that's stupid, you're pointing to it and saying, that's the joke, man. And, and then like, often, That's not a joke, that's just stupid shit happening. And often the pad of it is the aggressive awful violent gore that's like oh okay so that's why we're here i'm worried about humanity <laughs> there there is a line though because like if you look at your it's not the same but like you're fast and furious mm-hmm. those have a, a little bit of that it is a little bit like we know we're dumb but we're having fun i think the fast and the furious movies have an abundance of earnestness that this movie could never have. Maybe that's what it is. But, <laughs> it, but they, at the same time, they do know they're kind of, they're kind of dumb. Oh, they're they're absolutely dumb. But I think the Fast and the Furious movies, God help me, like legitimate. The best ones legitimately care about all of its characters. Because it's care about, about family. It is. It's like the Olive Garden. It's, it's about family. That's true. <laughs> Did, Whereas did, this movie is about people who and did Vin Diesel about, just walk in? <laughs> it's about <laughs> fucking cars bungee jumping out of planes. Yeah, too, you yeah. know. And maybe that's maybe that's what it is too. Like, there there's a reason. Like, there's something there. Like, and even if not, you're not into the tongue and cheek stuff, like yeah. or the the silly, not the tongue. They're not tongue and cheek, but yeah, the silliness. You've got cool stunts and car and, Yeah, it's and not things. lazy. It's not that's true. like they're putting effort into the part of the art that they are interested in. Not like this movie where everything that is touched feels like no one cared about that. The Stan Winston crocodile is probably the best reflection of someone's art. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, and I mean, I, the these this is certainly not what they're going for. I, and I think they're unicorns and that how great they are. But like, the golden example of genre comedy for me are film like the Edgar Wright films, like mm-hmm. Shaun of the Dead and and Hot Fuzz, which are at the same time really great zombie and cop movies, mm-hmm. while they are also really great comedies. Yeah, and it's it never yeah. it never tries to lean on weakness in its storytelling yeah. as like but we're a comedy so it's fine we can be shitty and weak yeah. that, yeah. that, that is a thing that I've heard that that's like important like good uh, genre comedies you need to be able to take away the humor and it's still a good story mm-hmm. yeah and it's not just spoofing something it's you know right. loving homage at most also pointing yeah. out the foibles of certain things and doing it successfully and still having people who have an arc Right. Another part of those movies is the emotional reality, not just that it's a funny comedy, but That's it is true, yeah. like real characters who are behaving the way that character would behave as established. Mm. Not like this movie, where they take all kinds of yeah. quick turns. And... and I don't have to like every character. No, not at all. But yeah, or even if you take like, um, if you're going for like a, a very meta, you know, we're making, we're we are dissecting how stupid monster movies are and pointing out how stupid they are like really i think a a a movie that does that well not with monster movies but dissecting kind of mainstream like the lego movie you know is constantly pointing out how stupid can storytelling conventions are but is clever about it instead of just being bad and and kind of being very smug about how bad it is yeah or like a cabin in the woods that's you know or really high concept so and pleased with itself, but like doing it in a brilliant cabin in the way. Woods is is yeah, that's a better example. Yeah, yeah. no, like a movie is perfect because yeah. that movie's so good. It's so good. Um, by the way, I misspoke. Um, I said I don't have to like every character. I was going to say I don't. Every not every movie has to have at least one likable character, but and obviously this movie does not. But you have to, you enjoy have to have, watching there's, the there's, Yeah, there's got to be something there. Yeah. You get. You would have to understand the characters. As some, yeah. You can make a fucking movie where we're rooting for the alligator or the crocodile to yeah. to kill everyone, but earn that movie then. You know, <laughs> to fucking decide what movie you want to be. Which again, it's not like this movie was lauded and, and has gone down in the annals <laughs> of film history as a as a smashing success, and where 
raging against the machine. No one talks about Lake Placid anymore. I, I'm actually looking at it, and it's actually 99% on Rotten Tomatoes. Oh, okay. uh, we, we, yeah, we totally yeah, screwed up. Like it's on the AFI yeah. American movie list, and yeah. we are irate. Actually, Excuse I me while I kill myself. Actually, I don't remember. It, it is certified bad. But <laughs> certified unfresh, but I don't remember what it is. But it's a great example of, like we're saying, that these kinds of movies are still being made, and like look at fuck the meg is like an is a huge movie out right now right i haven't seen the meg but i'm assuming the meg is a lot of being very smug about like no it's silly so that's like the whole joke right yeah i wonder i don't know anything about it i have a feeling like jason statham he's yeah he's probably gonna make it like that well not make it you know but like if he's in there that's probably what's happening yeah but then you know spy is a movie that he's in (laughs) and that's a movie that has uh, is very clever at poking fun at the genre it's yeah. spoofy I don't know but well, what I was saying is like if he's in it he, he's usually not in the straight action yeah. adventures he's there's the wink always with him yeah. uh, anything else we want to say what's what's your final verdict do you guys love this movie I do I really <laughs> like this movie yeah. I'm so angry at this movie <laughs> I was angry for so long um, I gosh let me go back to my notes because there was so much happening I wrote down a lot of notes for this <laughs> one actually maybe not I don't know if, I think I, I, I wrote, wrote down, down zero notes I wrote down a lot into a certain point and then I just stopped and like okay actually that's not what? true I wrote down notes during that first uh, that first scene all the plot just plops in and unprovoked calls blending Brendan Gleeson super fat with the what? no room to talk and also it's not provoked it's yeah. really just like a hey fatty yeah. And, like, coming back to it later, hey, you're fat. Like, <laughs> And it's not like he did something and he's <laughs> retaliating. It's yeah. just and unnecessary my... cruelty from someone who does not exhibit that anywhere else. And I know you said it was, you know, like, a little bit like he shouldn't be the one doing it. But I'm, I'm going to be more blunt. He's fatter than Brendan Gleeson. Yeah. Oh, he's like... No, that's... But yeah. he... I, uh, yeah. I guess he'd also be the guy with less self-awareness, you know. And if that comes from someone like, well, we had a, you know, slimmer, more handsome Ian Malcolm type in mind, we'll rewrite that line. When when Goldblum said he didn't want to do this, we actually (laughs) folded his character into the Oliver Black character. Do we want to do a rewrite? Nah, it's good. You know you've got sarcastic at the end of the sentence, like in... 12 lines. That's fine. <laughs> we'll fix it in post. That line originally belonged to Bill Pullman, but he wanted fewer lines in the movie, <laughs> so he just gave it to Oliver Platt. Yeah, it originally belonged to Bill Pullman, but he realized what an asshole line it was. And uh, Did this movie come before or after Jackie Brown? Do you know what year you this was? I, I should know. Yeah, that is a that it. is a good question. One of my fa- weirdly like one of my favorite performances ever is Bridget Fonda and Jackie Brown. I she think she is so fun in that movie. She really is. It's gonna break my heart if this came after. I I kind of hope it does because that helps my theory that she's like, <laughs> wow, this is the movie I can look forward to being in. Okay, guys, I'm just gonna be married to Danny Elfman she and live had my a life. Baby, Danny Elfman stuffed a child inside of her. Man, and he's can, so lucky. You know? Maybe that's why she retired. She's just like, I don't really need to work. I want to have I a child. My kid. It might be, but I like blaming the movie. Okay, so this movie was 99. Yeah, that definitely came after. 99 right? percent on Rotten Tomatoes. We know that. Yeah, Brown was 97. But, okay, what did she do after if, Lake Placid? What did she yeah. do after? <laughs> um, ooh, wow, Monkey Bone came after. Okay, that's Kiss a good the reason. Kiss the Dragon. Wow, don't know. That. Uh, Monkey Bone was pretty bad. Did you see Four that one? Of the Chris no, Isaac that's show? Brendan Fraser and yeah. Anyone else? Yeah, and yeah. directed by Henry Selick. Oh really? Yeah, it was Yikes. Really bad. Yeah, Is that you directed Nightmare Before Christmas. Yeah. Oh, that explains how that movie looked that way. But yeah, it did look awful. Did Danny Elfman do the music in it? I don't know. Is that how they met? Is that how they met? Oh, did something good come out of Monkey Bone? No, and, and I'll know. I'll tell you why. That I know that's not how they why. met. Um, because I had a huge crush on Bridget Fonda. Um, I, as as is I had a huge mentioned. crush on Danny Elfman. <laughs> And, and I that's heard how we wound up together. <laughs> <laughs> and I heard she was filming a movie at the Delamo Mall, and I really wanted to try to sneak into the Delamo Mall. I'm losing my fucking mind right now. Uh-huh. <laughs> that movie turned out to be Jackie Brown, and so my thought was like, "Yeah, I'm gonna go and meet her." And she she was dating Danny Elfman, so she has a thing for redheads. So I'm totally gonna go you in there and make my move. Thing. And I did not. Did you Did you see them film at the Delamo Mall? I, I, I didn't even go. I, was it I the scene know. where Lewis kills her? Spoilers. Man! 
Our... Came out 22 years ago, Lauren. Damn it, I know. I'm to blame, no, still. Now you're aging okay, me. Okay, Lewis. <laughs> I don't know what that means. That movie is fucking great. We need to see Jackie Brown. Um, Jackie Brown is one of my favorite Tarantino movies. I love that movie so, says, so, so much. I can't believe I haven't it's, seen it's it. It's very good. Uh, so... We don't like the movie. No. And, and I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to. Jackie Brown? No, it's great. <laughs> Four stars. Love it. Lake Plaza. I had a Jackie Brown poster in my room. Guess which uh, actor was on that particular poster? Michael Keaton. <laughs> no. Um, Samuel L. Jackson. <laughs> keep guessing. Robert De Niro. Keep guessing. Robert Forster? Robert Forster. Yeah, oh, that's yeah, 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 yeah. Like the second lead in that movie. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, that's I mean, good. It really brought his career back. Yeah. For like a minute. No, he was, he, he was in that episode of Breaking Bad that. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's a fucking good movie, that Jackie Brown. Yeah. Damn let's do that next time. <laughs> so now let's talk about the movie we wish we'd seen. Ugh, this movie is crap. I could write a better movie in my sleep. And now, IDOBM presents... The movie we'd wish we'd seen. And that is, of course, where we take this movie, you can't just say Jackie Brown, and take an aspect of it (laughs) and make a sequel, prequel, blah, blah, blah. We already know there were three sequels, at least two or three. I don't know. I just made that number up. Uh... Lauren, do you have anything? And I, I, I'm kind of a dick to go to you first because immediately, as soon as I said this, you made that face like, "Oh yeah, this segment." No, I have it. I'm just so. Oh yeah, I always absolutely 100 percent forget the segments we do that I should actually prepare <laughs> something for them. So it's just dead air of me going. Um, but for this one, I, I would like to see the movie with a sympathetic female lead that actually passed the Bechdel test. Do you think Didn't... the world's ready for that? <laughs> no, but I mean, like, okay, maybe we would expect too much from David E. Kelly, but just, she's so badly written and she has no reason to be there, and I wish we'd see the version of her being, like, the lab tech that gets sent away. It can still be the breakup reason, and the movie is her, like, opening up and discovering the world and getting used to people, and, like, there's actual relationship development and growth, and we actually might like her a little bit, at least by the end of the movie, and that she's not so stereotypically default breeding pair with Bill Pullman that maybe we actually get to see some chemistry between them and a reason why they would actually get together, at least for a little bit. That would be great. I don't like your SJW bullshit. (laughs) (laughs) What's SJW? Social justice warrior. Social justice warrior. I don't talk well. It's even just cohesive storytelling warrior. That's all I want. (laughs) Uh, do you have anything, Bobby? I was going to be very unoriginal and just say, pick a fucking lane. Are you a comedy <laughs> or are you a scary movie? But I'm going to say, um, I hinted at it earlier, uh, I would like a, a dark, twisted fairy tale in which uh, it, you know, a, a scary alligator follows an old couple home and the, uh, the older woman forms a, a nurturing relationship with this crocodile and the, 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 the climax of the film ends with uh, her feeding her her doubting husband to the, yeah. the crocodile and she and the crocodile presumably live happily ever after and so these four insufferable assholes ruining everything <laughs> for her. Because, because the husband is like, no, this alligator's getting too big, he's going to be a danger to everyone and she's all, no, he's just fine. Yeah, that would be interesting. I, I want to see the movie where uh, Brendan Gleeson's character, the sheriff or whatever he does, just just like a slice of life, th- life thing where he goes to the town and hits on all the um, teenage girls and is a... Maybe he's just a big creeper. Maybe he's actually super successful. Maybe they're into it. And yeah, maybe it's consensual, and we shouldn't just assume yeah. these old men getting with younger, young, young yeah. teenage girls is not exactly so insidious. Exactly. Uh, and then I want every conversation to end very abruptly, where <laughs> <laughs> where he actually answer, answers their question, and then she just walks off with with like half answers the question because that's what he did in this one too. He's like, yeah, we've got it taken care of, and then she just like walks away. Good enough. <laughs> And then he watches her ass. Yeah. That's the movie I want to see. And can I throw in a little bit more? Please. I want more, like, wacky small town main life. Because 
especially in a David Kelly movie, that seems like exactly what he would have wanted to put in this. Like the wacky locals who could even be a greater contrast to citified Rick yeah, Fonda. A greater c- contrast. I indeed. hate you. I was Bobby corrected me, so I had to pay it forward. Uh, actually, I always speak good. So <laughs> speak well. To like now. There's a, there's room for that in my movie too, Perfect. which actually I've just decided is now a TV series. Yay! Because David surprise, e- it's been canceled. Because <laughs> <laughs> David E. Kelly is better at TV series. Well, he's had more success. I remember. I was trying to remember the other thing that he's doing right now that is successful. He's doing Mr. Mercedes. Guys, I, just with re- Brendan Gleeson. I, I said that out loud. Did few, you? When? Yeah. When? Earlier. When? After. When? After you said when? the thing about Big Little Liars. What? I'll cut this part out. <laughs> you won't. Of course not. Because you're a monster. <laughs> can we just remake this movie and give it to Ryan Murphy? I thought you were going to say, can we just oh, re-record the podcast? So the first <laughs> half of it will be real interesting, and uh. then it's just going to degrade quick. <laughs> half is generous, Lauren. I know. Sometimes. <laughs> Yeah. That first scene will be pretty good. <laughs> His series always in badly. Spoiler alert, OJ gets off. Yeah, the, the last fuck. two episodes are just OJ masturbating. I was really <laughs> surprised. <laughs> anyway. Um, <laughs> hey, that was a good show, though. <laughs> it was. Uh, it was pretty much written for him, so that yeah. helped. Yeah. So uh, let's let's close the book on Lake Placid. And let's talk about um, just things that need no defense. Uh, I I'll go first since Sam, I made can other I people point go out, first. Can I point out what what's happening here and why we're going on things that need no defense? Be- yeah, because I'm shamed, sh- shamed to admit that the IMDb trivia for this movie is practically non-existent. Well, if you Google this movie, nothing shows up. <laughs> it's so disappointing. I was so excited to look at the trivia. I thought there's going to be so many bananas things on here. There's nothing. Weirdly, there. if you just put in Lake Placid movie, it says, did you mean Lake Placid Lake? <laughs> <laughs> I feel, I legit feel bad because I feel like we have dug up like the, the body of someone bad who died a hundred years ago and just started like making fun of imperfections in its corpse. And like, no these... one talks about Lake Placid. What the I... fuck are we doing <laughs> right all now? these like good successful people who are involved with just want to forget. Like, oh, I'm... we don't talk about that anymore. I'm actually going to do a brief segment of um, a podcast that need no defense, which is our podcast. In defense of, not in defense, we are in defense <laughs> of movies. How did this get made? Did Lake Placid? Did they? Yes. They did. Yes. And it's quite good. They had a lot of fun with the sarcastic lines as well. They may have made some points similar to what we have yeah. made, but, but I still say we gave it our own flavor. Yeah, with, ours were organic. Yeah. It's not like we just ripped off them. Yeah. Uh, we shop organic. <laughs> good one. See, I'm funnier than <laughs> whoever the fuck. Uh, I don't know, Take Paul, that, Paul Shear. Take know. that. Well, that's fair, but Paul Tompkins was on that episode. Oh. Uh, so. It was pretty good. How many good crocodile movies? Still just the one? Still just the one. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, just things that need no defense. And since I made you guys go before me last time, I'll go first. Uh, I'm going to recommend a Netflix slash German television show. It was, you know, like they do their joint things. Uh, called Dark. It is German language, so if you are okay with subtitles, then do it. They actually, Netflix defaulted to dubbing. And I immediately turned that off, because dubbing sucks. Because Sam's smart. Because I can read. Did you not see Dark last time? <laughs> <laughs> you wish that there were more people of color, because all the white people look the same? <laughs> I, know I, I know I've know i talked about that before, but did I do it on the podcast? I don't know. Okay. Uh, Plug it again, I still haven't watched You know it. what? You guys go first, then. <laughs> no, no, I think that's fair, because it's hard to keep track no. of what you just recommend to us I, in passing. Listen, Dark is so good that Sam has recommended it twice in a row, which means that it has kept his, his attention Fine. for... Fine. I'll do Steven Universe. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> is that what you were going to do? I, I was going to re-up it. I had another thing, too, but Steven Universe, we don't deserve it, man. It's so good. That's all. We don't, as a society, deserve it? Yeah, Because you're right. It's so good. And, and again, it's that thing where, you know, it's it's our hero just working his way through the world, loving and befriending everyone. And yeah. Just bringing positivity and empathy to every situation and trying yeah. to find non-violent solutions to problems. Peace How and weird. love on the planet Earth, man. Oh. Drums. Keep each city weird. Then I've got nothing. 
I do have a thing. I've been reading a comic book that I'm slightly ashamed of, mm -hmm. uh, especially after I spent an hour and a half ridiculing Lauren for <laughs> nostalgia on the Hook episode. Um, there is a comic book adaptation of a 90s television series called The Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. <laughs> and this comic book <laughs> reads wonderfully for anyone who is a fan of that show because it's basically if you take out all of the logistical limitations of the 90s television show... Um, and it's really fun. It's really fun. And I bring it up because um, apparently the arc they're currently in, uh, something happens to the morphing grid and they all have to switch their dinosaurs and their their colors. And the cover for that issue just came out and it has Zack as the pink ranger and Trini front and center as the red ranger holding her sword. And it just looked really cool and it tickled all sorts of exciting nostalgia things for me so the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers comic is actually very fun for Power Rangers fans that's adorable I know how about, how about you Lauren I would like to recommend better movies for all the people in this film <laughs> not all but particularly because we've acknowledged how great Brendan Gleeson is go check out anything of his but I particularly love In Bruges starring Colin Farrell and Brendan Gleeson it's written by Martin McDonough who's just this crazy, wonderfully dark, funny Irish writer, and it all takes place in Bruges, like mafia people, and it's starring no less than four Harry Potter actors. No, that's true, <laughs> and all just having existential crises at the same time, and it's so bloody and wonderful. And then Oliver Platt, who am I love, and who in the '90s was the brightest star in so many terrible movies. I'd like to recommend one of my favorite films called The Imposters that he did with Stanley Tucci that is set in the 1930s. They're both starving actors, and through a series of mishaps, they end up on an ocean liner, and it is a screwball, wacky comedy with an all-star cast of brilliant people, and it's so funny and great, and I think more people should watch it. I would like to recommend another Stanley Tucci Oliver Platt movie called Beethoven, about <laughs> a uh, St. Bernard. No, I'm joking. No, no, because it really points out how even in preposterous movies, <laughs> these two men are incredible actors and will bring all of their heart and soul to it. I'm going to throw in the Jackie Brown one, better Bridget nice. Fonda movie. Jackie Brown's so fucking yeah. good. Uh, and since let's do Around the Horn, while you were sleeping with Bill Pullman and Sandra Bullock, where he's an attractive lead. Anyone seen Pieces of April? Yes. Yeah, that's I like that one quite that's a bit too. And yeah. Oliver Platt's very good in that. Yeah, oh, because he's wonderful. Because yeah. he's really a great actor. Yeah, guys, I'm bringing it back around. I I thought of things I want to recommend. Nice. Uh, another thing that I hadn't seen in a very long time and went back and watched, and I was a little bit worried because I was having Lauren watch it. Um, Kingpin, the Fairly Brothers, <laughs> early Fairly Brothers movie. Yeah, it, it's still really good. There were there are a few jokes that aren't don't quite hold up. That, but but it's kind of like the airplane mentality where just, they just threw a bunch of things against the wall and you know if you didn't like that joke then wait 30 seconds and there'll be another one that will be a lot a lot of fun uh, but it's, it still has it also has heart it's a sweet you know there's a sweet story there and uh, the same day we watched that we watched The Way Way Back which was also a lot of fun it's a very good movie I've yeah. been trying to get him to watch it for several summers and we find the way to happen the movies are really really fucking yeah, good yeah um, uh, Sam Rockwell mm -hmm. is as he is in everything fantastic he does indeed Rockwell he does and I want to throw in Moon real quick just because what the hell Moon was great oh, with Sam Moon Rockwell oh really good I haven't seen Moon oh you oh, should Moon's Moon. good it, that's it's... Duncan Jones directed that one possibly Duncan Sheik Duncan Sheik directed yeah 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 ah. Because he's barely breathing the whole time because yeah. he's in space. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, you should check that out. Um, I think that's about all we do for the show, right? <laughs> yeah, uh, talk about Goofy Movie. Yeah. Pontificate on our opinions. Um, I'm gonna we watched Goofy Movie? Yeah, we watched the Goofy <laughs> Movie. Uh, Max is a dweeb. Um, we, Max we also, is cool. What's wrong I, with I, you? I don't know. the fuck is wrong with you? Dude. <laughs> Sam. Dude. I don't care. He's a goof. Uh, I'm going to... They're all goofs. I'm going to plug. Uh, we've got. I, I mentioned last time. Sketch 301 at UCB. Our graduation show September 5th, and we just put our you know, kind of the set list together. And it's shaping up to be a good show. I said it's at the Sunset location. Is actually at the Franklin location. 6:30 Wednesday, September 5th. That's a difficult time and place. But if you happen to be in the area, please come check us out. Any other plugs? 
Yeah, I got another podcast called uh, You're Wrong with Ian and Bobby. Uh, we've been on a little bit of a hiatus, but pretty soon we will have out an episode where we talk about blockers and the problem with Apu. And then shortly after, <laughs> we will have um, an episode where we talk about The Sopranos and Green Room. So. Who, who uh, recommends blockers? Ian did. Did you watch it? Yeah, it's great. Yeah, it was fun, huh? I liked it a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that is one movie. Uh, I'm gonna get in a whole other thing. This will this I'll save this for my blog. Um, I would not have seen that movie without Movie Pass, yeah. and I was so glad that I did. And I would have avoided that movie unless Ian had told me to watch it for our show, yeah. and I liked it a great deal. The the um, young lady of Indian descent, so good. I want to see her in more things. Great, yeah. she's great. She's gonna. We'll see her again. I think. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah I really agree. Uh, anything for you, Lauren? Um, I've got an Instagram that I like. No, I don't have anything. <laughs> I'm not impressive. Oh, not you're like super awesome. you boys. No, you are. You're awesome. Uh, well, I think that'll about wrap it up. Uh, once again, you guys are welcome. <laughs> we. Ne- I just realized at, at some point I was going to try to jam a synopsis of the movie in there. That never happened. Yeah, I mean there there I mean, isn't one really. It. <laughs> There's a crocodile, he eats shit until he dies. Crocodile's the hero, and... He eats shit until he dies. Yeah. No, he doesn't die. They ship him away to an empty oil tanker no, in Portland. No, one of them dies. Well, yeah, okay. He eats shit until he dies, that's also... So which was the bad crocodile? I don't think there were any bad crocodiles. Was this crocodile that they're shipping to Portland, was he the one going like, No, you don't understand, my... My mother is not with it, and she just she doesn't know she's eating people. Please don't hurt her. And I'm like, actually a vegetarian. And <laughs> Wait, do you think that the crocodile is Norman Bates? <laughs> no, there are, there are literally two crocodiles. <laughs> no, I know there are. I know. Wait, that would have been <laughs> insane if the other one just like floated up and was like a taxidermy crocodile. <laughs> <laughs> The, the one crocodile shows up wearing a wig. <laughs> By the way, he eats shits until he dies. Is the um the story arc for the second and third part of the human centipede. Ugh, yeah. I hate, you. I hate you so much. And on that note, bye everyone. Thanks for listening. We should yeah. do human centipede. I next. hate you both. I'm <laughs> quitting the band. Who would defend it? <laughs>